you never get tired of color theory. It is obviously my favorite subject because it's the foundation of how I built my entire art teaching career. I wanted to do something a little different today from what I normally do. Normally I create that color wheel and most of you are probably tired of the color wheel by now, but I'll be honest with you when I heard a customer say, do we have to do the color theory stuff anymore? Yes. <laughs> if you're a football player, do you still have to do the drills all the time so you can get really good at playing football? Always. It doesn't matter if you're at pro level. We still have to do the drills because this is how we're going to learn, practice, discover, get an idea of what we're really capable of. Right now what I'm doing is I'm taking just five colors and I want you to pick your five colors. I chose turquoise, green gold, Van Dyke brown hue, Indian yellow hue, and Hansi yellow medium, plus white and Titan buff. And I'm just kind of making a muck of it right now. What I'm doing is, is thinking about how these colors mix. Now, normally I like to say, let's just mix up three colors and see how much we can make out of three colors. But I'm kind of pushing my um, philosophies past where I usually go and seeing what else I can do. Part of the reason is because I want to see what happens when we, you know, expand our palette just a little. Limited palette is still one of my main philosophies. When you have too many colors and you have the entire rainbow, you have a super saturated canvas, and there's no one standout. So when we limit our colors, I think we get more interesting choices. Already I can see some very fascinating things starting to happen here. So this is what we're going to do. I have the circles drawn in my art journal. <laughs> you can use a lid or a cap if you have a stencil, that's great. I just happen to have this light bulb from my studio light set sitting in my studio, so it was like perfect size. Draw yourself some circles. The reason I'm doing circles is because we're gonna, it'll push you a little bit outside of your norm, your outside of the box. I have my palette knife in case I want to continue to mix with it, but I'm also going to be mixing just straight up with my brush. Pick your favorite five right now that you think are going to go together. If you have a red, a blue, and a yellow, you're definitely going to be able to create a rainbow book. Maybe this time think outside of the box and pick some analogous colors, meaning the same colors on the color wheel, on the same side of the color wheel. Here's our color wheel. My art journal has all of it in here. So you can see I've got some blues and greens and some yellows and oranges, plus a brown to kind of, that's in the orange family anyway. You can pick some warm reds and maybe just a couple of blues and see what happens. But try to, to pick something so that you're not hitting the entire rainbow at one time, or if you are, you're picking really neutral, off the wall colors instead of your same vibrant colors. What happens is we can start looking and seeing what happens with our choices. I'm trying to get to a really great spot here. There's how to mix greens. My art journal is full of interesting choices. When we start picking the oddballs and putting them together, now these are yellow, reds, and blues, we're going to have a much more interesting palette. And that's what I wanted to test today since we've been working on color for so long. Look at these. These are all my color notes. What happens if we start working on one of my most important color philosophies besides limiting your palette? That's also proportion. So I talk about proportion a lot in most of my classes, and that's what I want to discuss with you today. And that's choosing um, to use one color more than the other, which is why the analogous colors work here is because we've left out that whole group of oranges and reds. So we're really going to be able to focus on making an impact with these colors here. And I just want to start testing out different combinations of these different palette colors that I chose here um, and seeing what I'm going to like the most so that I can use them as an idea to replicate in my artwork. So, for example, I'm just getting in here and I've got this really dark turquoise color. But what could go nice next to it? Maybe we're staying with the turquoise. And a touch of green. That feels like it really needs to be very light. See, so we can keep mixing. Of course, my brush gets all contaminated because that's just what I do. We're not looking to fill in this circle perfectly. And then I wanted to just see, how do we go from there? Maybe we need to let them dry in between because we don't want to cross contaminate. Sometimes we just want it light. What about a lighter color? Because our values are not very sharp. All right, now I'm going to keep going with this. So taking from where we were. I guess I've made myself a light green. I really love this, whatever this weird olive color is that I made. That was mixing the Van Dyke Brown. So I suggest going through and doing this project now that I've got it started. Yes, I use the heavy body here, so it'll take a little bit longer to dry, but you may even want, there we go, to allow each layer to dry before you go on to the next circle. And look, I'm not keeping it organized in any one particular way. Consider the same for yourself. You know we're going to love this. That's kind of an orangish yellow. 
this is kind of giving you some constraints to how much color you can use for each circle. Now, I love the colors, the orangey yellows next to the turquoise, but this turquoise is so vibrant. So I'm gonna dull it down with a little bit of this Van Dyke blue hue and see, add a little white in there. And now I've got this gorgeous, see this is why we have a few different colors for mixing. Perfect. Yeah, so I wanna keep going with that. And maybe see how a muted color next to vibrant blue and maybe a darker a little pop of yellow but i'm going to mix my indian yellow here with a little bit of this hansa yellow medium and that just gives you a little pop of color So artists, as you can see, I'm starting to come up to the end of creating with this series of circles. We've got quite a wild uh, variety of colors that have shown up here. Some that are like totally unexpected. And you can see I continue to just explore, layer, make decisions to see how do I like these um, color combinations together and in what proportions and varieties are going to work the best. What little hint of color showing up in a couple of little places are going to make the difference. I've been mixing just these five colors plus white and Titan buff and we're starting to get a really good sense of you know what works and what doesn't work. I'm a whole lot out of my comfort zone at the moment I will tell you I really love it when I have uh, a warm color like red or orange in my palette so I'm gonna to have to try this one again just seeing how it would go using you know, maybe a different combination of five colors. And what I want you to consider doing, I want you to consider all the variations of both muted 
and saturated colors, meaning, you know, these are all muted colors are the ones that are like brownish grayed out versus these really saturated bright pops of green, a nice pop over here. I got this mint color here that I love. That's using a little bit of the green gold and a tiny bit of turquoise and white. And then if I want to dull it down a little, you can add a little of that Van Dyke brown hue. It's perfect, I have to admit, for dulling down a color so if you don't want it too bright. So that's what I've been playing with. What happens when we mix these different colors in different variations. So I'm gonna put some right here. I love the color, uh, this mintish green color right next to browns. It just looks so delicious. And right now I'd, I'd say I'd wrap up this one here with some more blue, but we have all these like typical blues. What can I do to make that more interesting? Maybe it just needs to be pure turquoise with, there we go. But what we have now are two very saturated colors. So the best way to dull that down to add a muted color. And so what we're learning here is how to get the different proportions and variations that we'd be interested in working in our art, no matter what the subject is that we're doing. It could be floral, it could be landscape, it could be abstract. But once we start playing with colors like this, what we're doing is we're starting to see what combinations are going to interest us the most. That's why I come down here and I'm going to come and come back to making up some of these colors in swatches. So don't forget that and to write down the colors you use. So in this case, we only had five colors, um, but I'd like to continue to, you know, keep track of that for later. And what I'm going to do is fill up two or three pages of this. Now, you don't have to do the entire um, layout. Maybe you do just a few colors on one side and different colors on the other side. Um, and then what we can do at this point when we're like getting everything filled out and we're kind of playing around with the different proportions, now we can come back in and they're starting to dry. Remember that was part of our issue and bring in some pops of brightness. So even white mixed with just a little color on the ones that we feel like maybe that's what it needs. And so we're bringing in just a little more of that oomph and just a teeny bit because remember we're working on our proportion. We want to keep this so that, you know, here we have all these blues and blue greens. So we're really in a, a very much a analogous palette here. And even if we bring in to make that white, uh, a yellowish, a light yellow, I think I liked it better green, but see, that's how we test out our ideas. I honestly want a warmer yellow. The warm yellow is a lot of fun, but this could create quite an impact. You know, we've got muted, we've got vibrant, we've got muted blue, we have a really dark blue. So even if right now at this moment you're like, I'm not so sure, test it. This is where we have to test. These are all of our experiments brought to life. Um, sometimes we just go right to the canvas. I understand that. Sometimes you, you know, you just want to move right into the playtime, but I'm really going to encourage my students to take time to think through all the possibilities. Ooh, I'm, I'm needing a little more of this Indian yellow hue. Yeah, I want, I'd, I'd love to see what kind of experiments you come up with because it's in these kinds of uh, color um, projects that I ask you to do, that's when everything's gonna start to click and you're gonna understand better how color works together. I've had enough students now go through my courses to tell me like they didn't get color until they started doing my assignments. So I'm gonna push you just a little bit to take a chance on on these really fun color studies. It's not a waste of time. Like our uh, football analogy, it's, it's in this play that you start to learn. You have to do the drills to really be able to bring it in mentally, like just how this works. Here's another really fun thing you can do. Now, I am gonna come back in and make sure that I get all my colors, so we'll, we'll do that at the end. Um, I probably should have been doing it all the way through because we have a lot of different colors to play with there even though we only used five. And look at how harmonious this really is. When you take a look at that, you're like, oh wait, those do all go together. But here's how you can have even more fun. Me and my oil pastels, just like what happens if we put a few marks in here using, now it is in the same family, but this is how I get that really fun. Like maybe we're gonna play with it just a little bit. I've got a nice olive green. Look at how it's just changing the look. Now you wanna say, okay, well, this has been fun and all, but I love the contrast. What happens if I come in here and mind you, I love it when we use like all of these colors that are harmonious and then just pick something that might be a complete contrast. Although I'm not gonna be happy with that one. I'm pretty sure, but I know I'm gonna be happier with this. this is like a kind of a violet magenta color. And we can just tease our eye just a little bit to say, 
what happens. And I can tell you right now, that could make a really fun color combination. All of these greenish and brownish colors in this pop. Now, why does this work? Because we're kind of taking an opposite on the color wheel approach. And our opposites are always going to give us that um, real, here we go, here we go. Yep, that really fun, like, there it is. Did you think that this is how we would be playing today? How about opposite of green? Some pink? Let's keep a little track of this. Keep those right there. And even taking colors that are still in that same family. Ooh, I, when I open that, that, just to kind of give it a little more play. You know, it's kind of fun to take a look through and see it all come together. Brown. Do I even have a brown? I have a lot of green. Oh, this one could be fun. Let's see what happens if we just bring in a little bit of this. Yep. Or here. Oh yeah, that color is really fun with this. That pink is so pink. I think what we'll need to do. Ooh, that's pretty. I'm going to bring that down just a notch with a slightly oranger color. There we go. I kind of like that better. This is how we play. And this is in the same family. What you think, folks? Are you ready to play? No, I don't want to put that there. Sometimes it's part of it. The fun is just bringing it across the different areas of my palette here. Where are we brave enough to add purple over here? Purplish pink. All right, this would be a real bold contrast, but you know what's going to work? Even though this isn't a color you would normally put together, why it's going to work is because we have such a limited palette. If you were to create work that was that limited in palette, browns, grayish browns, yellows, orangish yellows, and then have a pop of contrast that stark. Now, if you go and add blue and green in that, then it's starting to look a little crazy town. I'm not saying it wouldn't work with practice. The more you paint, the more you can take those risks. But at this point, you can see that this is starting to pay off for us. We're starting to take a look at how these colors all come together with um, a little bit a little bit more and a whole lot of certain colors and that just really makes the impact that we want it to make. Now I have to bring that all the way across. We need another color over here. I'm going to keep this harmonious. And I think that does it. That just really kind of pulls the whole idea together of creating color palettes that we're interested in using. Now if I'm going to tell you which ones of these I'd like to explore more, I'm going to say I really loved the strange contrast of this. This could make such a gorgeous painting just because it's very um, analogous with all of these orange or warm oranges and yellows, but that blue in contrast, that muted bluish green. Ah, perfect. What else would I say? I have a hard time with these darker Christmassy greens, but I think with enough brown, that could be really fun. And then, of course, who doesn't love these really gorgeous colors of aqua? But what we're doing is, is we're seeing proportion. A whole lot of aqua, a little bit of muted green, a tiny bit of brown and cream. Opposite here, where we're having a lot more of the muted greens and brown and just a tiny bit of aqua. Look at how interesting a series would be if you went in and chose these colors. You know, even if you did an entire series using all of these colors with just a little bit of pop here and there, you could really have a cohesive collection and make a bigger impact. So for a quick review here, I just wanna remind you the principles that we learned in this lesson. Limited palette, choosing fewer colors to work with. Three to six max, plus white, of course. Proportion, a little bit, a little bit more, and a whole lot. So our dominant color and our subordinate color. Value, darks and lights in every painting. It's really essential. Our saturation levels, saturation meaning the vibrancy of a color next to the muted colors, really gives us uh, a real impact with the colors that we're using. And overall, be playful. Be playful and do something unexpected, like a pop of that purplish pink or an orange, right where you wouldn't have thought it was going to be right. And in the end, you're going to give yourself a whole lot of information about how you want to create your color palettes and exactly which proportions are going to work best for you.